happy birthday, Choose Life International. Let's give God a round of applause for 14 years of ministry. Put some reaction in the chat right now as we say, Hallelujah! To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. It's 14 years of ministry. Glory to God. What a journey it has been. And we celebrate the goodness of the Lord. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, from Jamaica, from England, from Zimbabwe, from United States of America, from Trinidad, and wherever else you come from, you are a part of the forum of the celebration of the 14th anniversary of Choose Life International. And we dedicate this time to the glory of God. Oh, Faith yeah, Thomas, yeah. take me back to that moment when Choose Life International started. Oh my goodness. Well, I mean, there are so many moments. One of the things that I can remember is when we were just brainstorming, you know, what are we going to call this ministry when this brother on a, on a cruise, a, a Youth for Christ cruise said to us, you know, when I said I was leaving my job, why not start your own ministry? And we're there in the um in the cabin brainstorming and was, what are we gonna call it ah. and donovan said choose life international and we said i yeah, will laugh <laughs> the following one when somebody was trying to do a website for for donovan after he preached this wonderful suicide um message on suicide uh, 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 suicide prevention Suicide prevention. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and the person you. said, So I want to do a, a website for you. And Donovan came up with another name and it wasn't, it wouldn't work. And then the man said, You have another name? And both of us looked at each other and we said, Choose Life International. And the man went and he researched it and ta da! Yes, yes, yes. It was on. And we knew that God was saying, This is it. So, what a journey it has been. And we are here to just celebrate. October 1, 2008 was the start of Choose Life International. And uh, we started with the passion to help people live. Yes. S A M E is the acrostic that represents what we are about suicide prevention and grief counseling, A, alignment with divine purpose. <laughs> M, mission, sending and hosting teams, and E, evangelism. Faith, you remember those days when we had teenage sons who were so excited <laughs> about using string to do demonstrations <laughs> while telling the gospel story? Yes, and they did such an awesome job. I remember when they trained persons in, in Zimbabwe and at the, 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 the Youth for Christ conference in South Africa, how to use string. And it was amazing. And they took people on the street to practice the string ministry. And people gave their lives to the Lord as they did string ministry. We were at the Youth for Christ International Convention. And they taught people from over 20 different nations. You know what? Our children have grown up now and they are no longer teenagers. But guess what? We'd love to have some teenagers trained again to be able to just do this ministry of uh, just the string ministry. Faith, you know, it is such a joy to have had uh, you as my partner in ministry over these years. If I were to choose for a partner in ministry, I would choose you again. And I would choose you. God, uh, you. Thank you. Uh, so uh, yeah. yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. A wife of class. Mm -hmm. 36 years of marriage, 14 years of Choose Life International, partners together for the kingdom of God, and we celebrate the goodness of the Lord. Amen. I'm so grateful, Faith, for the many people who God has sent alongside us, our staff members, our board members, our volunteers, our prayer partners, our donors, our pick-up-us person when we are down, our counselors. Because even counselors need counseling, you know. Yes. And we really are grateful to God for all of you. 
who are on the platform right now as we celebrate, and so many others of you. Faith, I want to ask you to just take time and just welcome everybody right now. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. It is just so good to have you celebrating 14 years with us. I think 14 is significant. It is two sevens. Seven represents completion and another seven completion. So, wow, God is up to something. And we are just so thrilled to have all of you with us today. So welcome from our special guests like Pastor Dwight Fletcher. And I, you know, it's always difficult to start calling names. Our sister Lizma Forbes. And of course, we have our, our board chairman, Mr. Keith Ellis. And also our brother Raphael Thomas, who's going to be our moderator. And we have our sister Karen Berry, Karen Carberry out of London. And all of you who are here with us from near and far, whether today is your first webinar or you've been here before, welcome. It is just so good to have you. And if you are here for the first time, a special welcome to you as we celebrate our 14th anniversary. And Faith, I think our special guest speaker is in the house. Oh my goodness, where is he? Pastor Sam. Welcome. We look forward to have to hear from our brother Sam out of New York. Well, you know, Faith, he has played such a significant role in our lives, in my life. I remember when I was doing my doctor of ministry, it is awkward to say it, but we were classmates. He was my teacher and then we became classmates. And I wanted to do this research on um, evangelizing the Garza community. And I had done so much work in suicide prevention already. And he said, oh, you have done so much work. It's a virgin territory. You have done so much work in suicide prevention. Why don't you just focus on this way, a doctoral dissertation? I followed good counsel. So thank you again, Pastor Sam. And the rest is history. It is the, the, on that basis that Choose Life International is built. Thank you, Pastor Sam, for your support over the many years, for your involvement in our lives, for your encouragement. And we will introduce you in an in the appropriate time. Right now, Faith, I'd like to invite out of Trinidad, Pastor Veneta Malay, a volunteer of Two's Life International, to do that opening prayer. Father, we just want to say thank you again for 14 years of ministry and service to your people. We thank you for providing us with this great opportunity. And we thank you that with the provision of the opportunity, you have provided everything that was needed, all the skills and talents that became necessary, you provided. And we want to say thank you. At this time, Lord, we just put this evening's program into your hand. We thank you for where we are now, and we just ask that your spirit would be so present and evident amongst us as we go forward this, this evening or afternoon, this afternoon. May your great name be glorified and honored. May everyone be blessed and benefited in some way by what shall happen in the next few minutes. We say thank you again, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Ben, Pastor Ben, volunteer of Choose Life International. So great to have you as part of the team. Greetings to all the people in Trinidad who have benefited, who are who have to this benefited of benefited by the ministry of Choose Life International. Thanks for the ways in which you have welcomed us. You know, there are two reflections I want to give before I hand over um, to our moderator. First one mm -hmm. is one from Sister Angela, Dr. Angela Ramnell Williams. When Choose Life International was started, she had a vision. God gave her a vision of <coughs> Choose Life International. And she said, Choose Life International is like a little tributary starting and winding through until it becomes a big river and 
opens out into a big, like ocean. God gave her that vision for Choose Life International from we started at the beginning and what a journey it has been. But also I was up on the prayer mountain over in Portmore, St. Catherine, Jamaica. And I read the scripture that talks about lizard. Anybody know that scripture? Find that scripture in Proverbs. This says, and the Lord dropped something in my spirit. Choose life international is like a lizard. Small can be handled by the hand, but is found in king's palaces. That was on our second, anniver second anniversary. Small can be handled by the hand, but is found in king's palaces. And what a journey it has been, as God has just given us opportunities to serve many people at various levels in society across this nation. Ladies and gentlemen, I have with us today as our moderator, a gentleman who I have known all his life. He's a member of the board of Choose Life International. He has been in the pastorate for over 30 years. He has followed good example. He has married one wife, has two sons, and he is now an elder, a uh, Germantown Gospel Assem Christian Assembly out there in Philadelphia. Uh, he hails from Anata Bay. He is my brother, Dr. Raphael Thomas. It is at this time I hand over the leadership of this program to Raphael. Let's make him welcome our moderator for today. Thank you, Donovan. It is such a joy to share in this program this afternoon. And let me take the opportunity to congratulate you and Faith for your steadfastness over the years and for your commitment to bring in the vision that God has given you to pass. And uh, I have had the privilege of being a part of the, the board since its inception. And I have had uh, some unique opportunities to observe the work of Choose Life International. One such occasion was when I was uh, doing a class at teaching at the Caribbean Graduate School of Theology and Donovan was our guest lecturer. And he got a call right in the class. There was a man in a tree. He had all the paraphernalia to commit the act. And the entire class got involved. And we spoke with that man in the tree until he was finally convinced to come down. And um, can I ask if that man is still alive today? He is alive and is doing well. I don't remember the tree part of it, but anyway, he decided that he was going to kill himself. And let me just carry that story. We, we prayed with him. The whole class listened in and we didn't know what else to do. We prayed and asked the Lord for help. He said, he called me a couple of days after to say he had a dream. He dreamt he was, he was falling in a bottomless pit. And he was falling, 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 falling. And when he woke up, he was happy. It was only a dream. He ran outside of the house and was happy to be alive. Changed his mind about killing himself. And really was doing well. God works in mysterious ways. His wonders to perform. No longer Choose Life International believes in a biopsychosocial, spiritual model of intervention. There are only things, some things that God himself can do as we seek to to, to to help people choose life. Yes, Ralph, he's still alive. Oh, praise the Lord. So we are here to give God thanks for his goodness. And uh, I would say Choose Life International has had good success. You know, the Bible talks about good success in Joshua chapter one. And um, sometimes people describe success in very dubious ways. Like I heard of one surgeon who said, the surgery was successful, but the patient died. But God has given Choose Life International good success. And so many persons have uh, come to that place where they have lost hope. But to my understanding, none have gone on to complete the act. And we give God praise for 14 years of ministry. And so I would love to just read uh, Psalm 105, just the beginning, it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, sing to him, sing psalms to him, 
talk of all his wondrous works, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. So as we celebrate tonight, we also seek the Lord for his continued directions for the days ahead. It is my joy to be the moderator tonight, and uh, I will go right ahead with the program that is before me. I think uh, we have some greetings at this time, and uh, we are going to invite, first of all, Reverend Dwight Fletcher, Senior Pastor for Transformed Life Church, to bring us his greetings. And after that, Miss Karen Carberry, CLI volunteer based in England, and then Mr. Keith Ellis, CLI board chairman. So let's take those greetings at this time, starting with Pastor Flesher. Well, good evening, everyone. And let me bring you greetings, CLI, from Transform Life Church. And to um, Donovan and Faith, it is so great to see a vision born on a ship, right? Um, just, <laughs> uh, you know, born in a room where, where the Lord obviously moved and you just follow that direction. And we have been tracking your progress and that tributary now is becoming that big river. And um, the impact you have had over the years has just been remarkable. And how much the Lord has done with you and allowed you to have influence in, in all dimensions of our society. And we are so proud of you and congratulations again. I want to just congratulate the board and, and all, that are, all the people that are involved, your staff, because you know the vision starts with somebody or with a couple, but you have other people who come alongside you to make it happen. So we just congratulate you. you know, when we started TLC, we recognized that counseling needed to be a significant part of our ministry, just based on all that was in front of us. And as we search for partners, we realized that CLI was a, a really great partner. So they have become, CLI has been our preferred partner now for the last eight years, providing counseling service, general counseling service, grief counseling, suicide counseling, our suicide prevention counseling, thank you, thank you, suicide, thank you. Su the suicide successor, because you have been with us um, in, in a case where, where the person's husband killed himself and you had to be there just to provide counsel. So it has been a tremendous experience. And one of the things that I really appreciate has been CLI's responsiveness. Like if I'm in a spot, I know that I can call. And if, if they can't even come immediately, which they have on many occasions, they can give me the, the pointers of what to do in the immediacy, just to help to create a solution to the situation. So from us here at Transform Life Church, we are blessed to have you as a partner. And um, you have made um, significant contribution to our ministry and to the lives of numerous people, people from our church and people that um, from outside. And, you know, and because we, we want to be able to help people to heal, even persons who we have just met, you know? So we want to thank you again for being just a partner. Congratulations to you and Faith. Um, it's a great joy to see this vision come to fruit. And we are very proud of you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Dwight Fletcher. Yeah. And now we will take the other greeting uh, from Miss Karen Carberry, all the way from England. Good evening. Can you hear me clearly? Loud and clear. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, well, good evening from the UK, bringing in special greetings at just after half past 11. No, coming up to half past 11 at night here. <laughs> uh, we just want to um, extend our greetings and our love to Choose Life International and also um, 
want to really congratulate Truth Life for 14 years in ministry. It really is quite something and certainly has impacted my life uh, in, in being able to be a volunteer. And I certainly recommend it for anybody who uh, is out there thinking that they'd like to um, use their gifts and talents or, you know, just to be able to come alongside Choose Life, really, in, ever, in, in any way that they can. You know, I'll extend that invitation as a, a witness, as a volunteer, that it is truly a transformational experience indeed. So, you know, from my um, wonderful experience of being a volunteer, you know, we were able to, um, in, you know, following the lockdown in 2020, think about what can we do for the Lord? What's he calling us to do in 2019? And, you know, prior to that, I had I had the privilege of meeting uh, Donovan and Faith, the founders, uh, in the UK when they were travelling off to... Um, Israel. to um, Israel. To Israel, thank you. Right. <laughs> I think you were in Scotland as well at some time. Right. So I was able right. to meet them face to face. Um, but also, you know... Uh, invited to their when it was their face in person uh, suicide prevention conference. I had the privilege to be able to travel over to the UK and to be able to present as well in Montego Bay and Kingston. Um, what a, a, a astounding experience, really, um, to meet people, to meet people who are impacted by their work. And also to be able to do a little bit of mission work or uh, ministry into the community in Kingston. You know, God, you have to be ready. <laughs> and uh, showing us you've got to be ready. And that's really important. Uh, so that was just an absolute joy to be part of, of that time. And then, you know, as being a volunteer from the UK across all types of time zones, uh, because we had people from all around the world who were joining us. I had the, you know, immense opportunity to uh, to also co-present a seminar on domestic violence right at the beginning uh, with uh, one of our wonderful board members as well. And it was, you know, quite something really to be able to mixed together sort of my experience but also the legal perspective as well uh, and it really was an eye opener from then um, being able to moderate uh, and uh, to be able to interview a wealth of people from uh, across the globe in Jamaica I really got to know Jamaica my parents are Jamaican they're in this country they're in the races. They've just come back from a holiday in Portugal, actually. Uh, and um, although I had been to Jamaica, you know, a couple of times when I was young, I don't think I, I really got the real Jamaica until I moved, when I went over to um, serve with Choose Life. But also online, I really got my baptism into Jamaica and, and the Jamaican people and the wonderful, amazing works that the Jamaican people have been doing, not just in Jamaica, but across the world. That was just, and across all sorts of areas in life as well. You know, it was just an absolute privilege. And so, you know, I just want to extend again, congratulations to Choose Life International for their 14th year in ministry and playing a blessing over many more. The work that you do, is quite vast. The wonderful team that you have doing counseling, and again, the privilege of being able to meet the team, but also hear from them through these webinars have been absolutely amazing and transformational. You know, I've uh, noted all of that on LinkedIn. So people who haven't actually been in the seminars have been able to pick up the reruns from YouTube. And they're still there on YouTube. So I would say, you know, the resources that are there 
the life histories that we've heard from people, the wisdom, you know, the good and the bad has been just so wonderful to observe. And, you know, Choose Life is into helping everybody, wherever you are from, uh, with hope. So thank you very much and congratulations to Choose Life International. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Carberry. And now we move to the chairman for Choose Life International. He has provided leadership for the board for these 14 years. And it is my pleasure to invite Mr. Keith Ellis to bring his greetings. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, friends all. It gives me such great pleasure to greet you on behalf of the board of Choose Life International. This 14 years has been such a wonderful period for all of us, us volunteers and partners and workers and clients, everybody. The experience is, has been for me a, a work of God. So, you know, it's like laboring with God in this part of the vineyard. And we are very happy as a board to be a part of it. I, I want to say that, you know, when we celebrate, you celebrate 14 years, a person can say, I celebrate 14 years. 14 years of Choose Life is, is no ordinary 14 years. It's 14 years of changing lives, of doing things that people, that the people change, not the circumstances of organizations. In fact, I, I they say we have changed governmental policies. You know, there are things that we have experienced as an organization that just blows your mind. I can remember one episode which, which stands out in my mind most is the one in which um, Dr. Thomas was patched in to, to the um, constabulary and this woman was thinking of showing herself and her baby off a very high building. And um, because of his intervention, she changed her mind. I had the responsibility of taking her home after a process. And when I got home in Southside with her and I saw all of the people gathered around because they were unsure what had happened. And I heard her confessing that she had changed her mind and just the impact, the, the whole process of turn around influenced me so much. I want to tell Donovan and Faith and all of the persons who are participating in this organization of, of, of partners or volunteers, how appreciative we are as a board. We are a part of something that is life-changing. I remember when we started in Donovan's dining room and we never knew that years after we would be meeting all across the world in hotel rooms and we would be incorporated in two different countries that we would be making an impact in Cuba and across Latin America. We never knew that so many persons in Africa would be calling and, and pastors would be relating to us in a way in which they are affecting their denomination, their membership by the work and the, 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 the kind of training that we provide. We are amazed at what God is doing. And we are fascinated about this journey because we know that this is the tip of the iceberg and where God is taking us as an organization. We do not see right now, we cannot fully grasp it. But looking at the trajectory, we know that there, there are wonderful, amazing things that are ahead for us, ahead of us as an organization. We are excited about the journey and we are prepared for that which God has in store. So I invite you to continue to pray for us we invite you to continue to pass, participate in, in any way that you see possible. We have many different arms of the organization, the happiness, the suicide prevention, 
the counseling, the chaplaincy, the emotional assessment, the work we do with corporate. We have so many areas in which we invite you to come on board. So if you have the skill set, let us know and let us help each other to change lives, to cause people in Jamaica and across this world to choose life. Because that is what we desire to do, to help people live spiritually, physically, and emotionally. So thank you again. And we look forward to another 14 years of work in this part of the union. Thank you, Mr. Ellis, for that greeting. And now we are going to transition from greetings to testimonials. But before I make that transition, allow me the liberty to extend greetings on behalf of my own family, Velda and the two boys, as well as the extended family, because we have had the, the joy of uh, seeing this organization make significant impact on others, but also on our own lives. God bless you, and may the ministry continue to transform lives. So we transition now to testimonials and we have Stacy and Kimball uh, who will begin this section. Stacy and over to you. Good evening everyone, good evening and congratulations against Choose Life. Uh, 14 years, wow, um, who would have thought? Uh, I know I knew it. Um, I've spent 13 years with Choose Life. Uh, I started in a living room with my counseling. And then I ended up after counseling, I was able to volunteer and then I was able to serve at Choose Life as an admin assistant. And during my time as an admin assistant, um, wow, I think I filled many hats there. <laughs> but I just remembered at that point, honing in on purpose for my life. And I did not know that my mother's um, death would have ended up becoming, it was something that I wouldn't talk about. It was because my mom completed suicide and I was nine. Mm -hmm. And it's something I would never speak about and stuff like that. But once I went through counseling with Choose Life International, that pivotal change in my nine-year-old life. By the time I got to work there, it became, that experience became like a movement because um, Dr. Thomas saw something in me that I thought about, but didn't think it was really possible. And while at Choose Life International, I was able to speak with other people who were thinking of completing suicide, I was able to share my mother's story, myself, my story as to what happened after someone does that, my experience. Um, counseling I choose that helped me to no longer have asthma. It's, it's just a plethora of things that I can say, uh, getting counseling and healing from trauma will help. Um, doctors are now looking into stress and how that ties in with asthma. It's not just a molecular disease, as one doctor was saying. And for me personally, I can tell you, I always had asthma attacks when I was a child. Straight up until when I went into counseling, I was on um, inhalers for years, pills, and a nose spray. I was on all three for years. So I can honestly say that once I went to Choose Life, got my counseling and was able to let go of all the pent up stuff, the grief, the anger, the unforgiveness, um, just being able to mourn, that was pivotal for me. And I saw where my story or um, just me getting through that was able to help so many people at Choose Life. Um, clients, whenever we spoke, whenever we had the opportunity to speak to Jamaica, to let them know we have a seminar coming up. Um, whoever is listening, if you have the opportunity to volunteer in any way, shape or form, I say dig in. Um, this work is not, as Jamaicans would say, it's not pian pian work. It takes spiritual guidance. It takes, it takes knowing that it's not about you. 
And while I was there, even if I had questions, even I was while I was a close lead, by the time I got to where I'm at that desk answering the phone and helping the Thomases, it was apparent to me that Dr. Thomas and Mrs. Thomas, they were no, they were no ordinary people. And then to some extent, they did perform ordinary. Um, I remember sometimes they'd be overbooked because we didn't have a lot of staff and they'd just be booked and not even able to eat lunch. So when I'm saying to you that this is work, it's work and they've chosen to take it on. Um, if you're able to donate financially, I advise you to do so because that money goes towards many things. I've been there and see where that money pays for someone to come in for counseling, someone to get lunch money, to help someone else with rent. Like they have, they have helped people to really choose life. And um, I chose life when I decided to make that call and decided that I wanted to work through the grief of losing my mom to suicide. And I've just seen countless people choose life while I was there and after. I'm now in Texas and I've seen where my experience at Choose Life has helped me in my current role. Um, as a claim specialist, I now work as a claim specialist in injury. And I've seen where that experience has helped me. My own story has helped me. And I just say to everyone, um, continue to support. Continue to support this organization. This is going to be a generational organization. It's not just 14 more years and 14 more after that. This is going to be an organization that will be there for years to come, just looking at the world and what's happening, people are going to need help. People are not really connected. So the spiritual parts of it, definitely helpful um, and is needed. And, and that's what I want to say. Congratulations, Choose Life. Your birthday is the same as mine. So I come in, um, didn't know what to expect when I came, but man, I am grateful for my time. I am grateful. Um, to just be a part of this movement. And uh, thank you. Amen, amen. 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 Thank you, Stacy. And so you have heard it from our own mouth, the testimony. We will take another testimony and we will go to Zimbabwe. Bishop Muparutsa, pre recorded greetings. So let's take that. Greeting from Zimbabwe at this time. I'm grateful to choose Life International for the help and support we have gotten. I think we can take some more um, volume throughout 2021. I'm grateful to choose Life International for the help and support we have gotten um, throughout 2021-2022. We have had tremendous support in terms of scholarships for training for pastors and leaders, community leaders, to be able to provide support uh, to be to those be victims. Uh, or those who would have uh, suffered family suicide or who, who could be victims to suicide. It has been so, so grateful. Many people know how to handle those situations. Many people know how to help people who are affected or who are, um, are contemplating suicide. So on behalf of Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. This is Reverend Bishop Mbarutsa. I'd really love to put my voice to say thank you so much, Dr. Donovan, and your team and your partners for what you have done to help Zimbabwe. We continue to cherish your support. We continue to also support what you are doing uh, by availing ourselves for further training and partnerships. Thank you very much. It has been a blessing and a privilege to work together in partnership with you. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you, Choose Life International and all the organizers of the webinars that we have been part of and the trainings that we have been part of. Thank you very much. God bless. So that's the audio from Bishop Muparutsa from Zimbabwe, uh, demonstrating to us that Choose Life has not only impacted persons in Jamaica and the US, but all across the world, persons have been impacted and transformed by this ministry. At this time, we'll take the testimonial from a senior human resource officer of Unicoma, uh, Lizma Forbes. Let's take this testimonial at this time. Okay, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, moderator. I just want to extend thanks to Dr. Thomas for the invitation. I um, just want to use this medium also to say congratulations to Life International on their 14th anniversary. In particular, Dr. Thomas and Mrs. Thomas. This was indeed a great initiative that they started. It has helped to reshape and impacted lives of many persons. Choose Life International has been serving the Unicom team since 2012. That is all of 10 wonderful years. We are 10 years of the 14, so we actually grow with them. We now consider Choose Life International to be a part of the Unicom family, especially during the last three years when we were faced with many challenges during the COVID era. Dr. Thomas made himself available at any time we called on him. He never said no. As a matter of fact, I don't think he knows that word. If he cannot provide the service himself, he appoints someone to assist. Choose Life International is very effective and efficient in their service delivery, reliable and dependable. I will therefore have no hesitation in recommending Choose Life to other institutions or even on an individual basis. Some of the services that they provide to our team are grief counseling, change management counseling, and also on an individual basis where persons are faced with various challenges. May it be fear, feeling alone, anxiety. Choose life is always there for us. Choose, choose life international. The Unicom team wish you continued success as you serve our brand and other brands. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Ms. Forbes. Now they say a picture is worth a thousand words. And so we're going to have a pictorial presentation of Choose Life International and the ministry uh, that has come forth from the work of Choose Life International. So let's now have the pictorial presentation.
I choose to walk in freedom. Hold it up. Amen. Amen. Let it go. Ladies and gentlemen, once again I invite you to view our TV show Geared to Live on MTM TV. <laughs> Okay, uh, that's worth uh, a few million words. <laughs> if one picture is worth a thousand words, there we have it. Millions of words uh, have been communicated through those pictures. Thanks to those who put that uh, together to give us uh, a sense of the, uh, the history of Choose Life International. We now have a song by Mrs. Rosemary Stewart, an associate counselor of Choose Life International. Let's welcome 
Miss Stewart. Happy birthday, Choose Life International. It is indeed an honor to be a part of this God-given mission. I wish you God's blessings as you continue on this journey of transforming lives. God bless you. How can I say thanks for the things you have done for me? Things so undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude. All that I am and ever hope to be, I owe it all to thee. To God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be the glory for the things He has done with His blood he has saved me with his power he has raised me to god be the glory for the things he has done just let me live my life. Let it be pleasing, Lord, to thee. And should I gain any praise, let it go to Calvary. this part he has raised me to God be the glory for the things he had done to God Bless you, choose life. Praise the Lord. Indeed, to God be the glory for the things that he has done. We give God glory for the founders of Choose Life International, 
Donovan and Faith Thomas. We give God glory for the members of the board. We give God glory for the lives that have been saved. We give God glory for the families and individuals that have been comforted. We give God glory for the financial supporters over the years. We give God glory for his direction, for his anointing, for his leading. Hallelujah. Can we say glory to God? Indeed, we give him glory. At this time, Hallelujah. we are coming up to uh, hearing from a man of God. And I believe, uh, as always, he will have a word in season. But uh, the honor tonight to introduce the speaker is uh, reserved for my sister, Vernica Thomas Burt Miller, uh, our sister, our only sister. So I'm going to invite her to come and uh, introduce someone uh, very special to her as well. Vernica, over to you. Also Secretary of the Board of Choose Life International in the USA. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Sister. It is with great pleasure that I take up this responsibility. It's a privilege to be asked to read or introduce my pastor and my superintendent. And um, I just want to say congratulations to Choose Life on your 14th. It's been a, quite a journey and I'm a part of that from the first inception. And it is a great journey that the Lord has taken you on, but he has also been your provider and guide. And we thank the Lord. Um, I'll go right into introducing Pastor Sam, as I affectionately call him. Please forgive me, but that's how we address Pastor Sam. And um, it's a privilege to be asked to introduce Pastor Sam. His family, his father is uh, part of my immediate family's growth and development in a special way. So it is with joy that I introduce Pastor Sam. Hi, Pastor Sam. This is Brother Sam Vassell, Reverend Dr. Samuel Carl W. Vassell serves as the district superintendent of the Metro New York District of the Church of the Nazarene, a district comprising 125 churches worshiping in more than 10 languages in the tri-state area of New Jersey New York and Connecticut. Pastor Sam was the senior pastor of Bronx Bethany Church of the Nazarene, Bronx, New York for 18 years from 2000 to 2018 where I worship. He was senior pastor for the Rosetown Holiness Christian Church for 10 years, 1990 to 2000. He also served as the presiding bishop of the Holiness Christian Church in Jamaica for two years, 1998 to 2000. Dr. Vassar has worked extensively over the years in various student ministries and also has served as a seminary lecturer in Jamaica and the USA. He holds a doctor of ministry I'm sorry. From Columbia Theological Seminary. Okay, from Columbia Theological Seminary and the Masters of Arts in Theology Studies, New Testament concentration from Wheaton College and a Bachelor of Science in Natural Sciences from the University of the West Indies. He's married to Angela. July 12, 1980, and they have two children, David and Cara Beth, who are married to Deidre and Greg, respectively. He and Angela have six grandchildren, Caris, Pax, Che, Gabriela, De Deha, and Kairos. This is the Pastor Sam's mission to be God's messenger tonight. He is a man of God, as you heard, and he is respected in all areas. I introduce to you now, I present to you, Dr. Vassar. 
let's make Reverend Dr. Samuel Bastel welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you very much, um, uh, Dr. Thomas, Raphael Thomas. Um, and th thank you very much, Dr. Donovan Thomas and Mrs. Faith Thomas for your invitation to be involved in this way on this very, very significant milestone, this 14th anniversary. Um, for us, as Faith has mentioned in her, in, in her, in her, in her brief greeting at the beginning, this is quite significant for us. Seven is, is important to us and, and, and double seven is, is, is significant for us. So I, I, I take it as a, a real privilege to be involved in this, in this, in this celebration. I'd like to congratulate Choose Life International on behalf of Angela, my, my wife, and she, she especially, um, she's, she's, she's definitely um, in the, in the, in, in, in the, in the, or, what we call the, what we call the, the, the video sphere, um, participating in this. And thank you guys for making this, this, this whole thing possible for people to participate in this uh, way, in, in this significant move that you have done. You have become a pioneer in, in this, this element of delivering um, spiritual um, information to people. And um, Angela is, is participating this evening and, and wants to, 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 to make sure that you all um, know that she, she sends her congratulations and is, is very proud, proud to, to know you um, and, and, and to be involved in any way that she has been involved over the past years. <clears throat> um, the, 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 the issue for those of us who have been affected by the, the tragedy of, of, of suicide is that th those of us are aware that our friends, in my case, two very close friends in the past five years, um, and, and, and our loved ones somehow lose hope. And so I am, I, am, I, I am gratified by the idea that surely in September and October, there has been the emphasis on, on, on hope in, 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 the, in the whole approach of Choose Life International. And at this time of the, 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 the anniversary, I think, that there can be, be, be no more sort of worthy subject for us as to, to, to reflect on, but Christian hope. As, 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 as Dr. Thomas Donovan Thomas said, um, Choose Life is uh, unashamed of making, making known that along with all the other tools that are available, that are available to help people negotiate the, the, the challenges in life, the challenges that sometimes lead to, to, to suicide. This organization is unequivocally committed to spiritual. In fact, in this context, we don't even have to say spiritual so that somebody might think that you know we are sort of new age or so in fact this organization is committed to christian faith as the basis of our motivation to help people and with confidence that there is a living christ who by his grace and who in the fellowship of the spirit is active in bringing life to people. Um, you know, that he, 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 he has declared that he has come that people would have life 
and not only, you know, abundant life, have, have life more abundantly. It is, it, is that, that, it is that reason that somebody like me can come. I mean, like on Sunday evenings, we have all benefited from professionals of various kinds and, 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 and Choose Life is open to really access all the help that they can get from all sources so as to be engaged in this salvific work in the lives of people. But um, when they ask me, they know Dr. Thomas, Raphael, and, and, and Donovan, they had me as, as, as their teacher. They know that in my case, what I know is, 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 is the Bible and I am preaching so that I apologize for anybody who expects to some sort of, um, you know, psychological rationale of, for, for the work. Because I, I really don't know anything about that. I, I will I definitely know who to call when I need that kind of thing. I know who to call Faith and Donovan and so on. And um, so what I am going to do is, you know, a reflection on this idea of hope, which is the central thing in 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 in, in our Christian in our in in our Christian faith, and um, and um, and and uh, a serious thing that is the the very crux of the matter in saving people from the tragedy of suicide. If there is hope, there is <laughs> no need to take one's life. Most people, if not all, all the people who do those kinds of things have, you know, the tragedy, uh, have, have lost hope. And, um, and, and, and so we, we, we want to reflect on, on hope today from the Christian standpoint. Um, somebody in, 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 in thinking about Christian unity started the, the phrase and it has been attributed to a lot of people, including, you know, even before this person was born, Augustine and since then. You know, the, the, the phrase that um, in essentials unity, in non-essentials liberty, and in all things charity. It has been a slogan that has really captured the minds of, 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 of Christians and has been the sort of motivation for Christian unity. What are the basic things that we need to hold together in common? One of the challenges is that what are regarded, what, what things that are regarded as essentials for some are not regarded as essentials for others. And so even in the agreement of what is essential is, is, is a problem. As I said, I come to this as a Bible reader, and I think it is quite clear that from Paul's standpoint, the essential elements of the Christian faith, according to what he says in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13, now abideth faith hope, love. And in that chapter, and in that section of his letter to the Corinthians, he is making the case for the priority of love. Uh, you know, some of us have, have been able to, to think through it, that, 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 that faith and hope really will take you to the end. But hope Love takes you beyond. In fact, there's an understanding of our Christian faith that it, it, eternal life will be an immersion with God, in fellowship with God, in love forever. So there is a sense in which it is, it is, it is, a, it is an understanding from Paul 
that there is a limitation to faith. There is a limitation to hope because hope will be realized one of these days. But there is no limitation to love. I will leave the discussion about love, which is so very important for another time. This evening, we want to talk about hope. Paul sees this as one of the three essential things. If you are a Christian, you have to have faith. According to the writer to the Hebrews, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. Faith, according to John Stott, is reasoning trust based upon your understanding of who God is. Then you will put your trust in God. And that is the faith that we're talking about, reasoning trust. We are not going to talk about faith today directly except just to say faith, hope, and love are the essentials. What I found out was that the Apostle Paul sees hope as the foundation for faith and love. Hear what he says to the Colossians. He is praying for them, and he has heard about their faith and love that has spread throughout the world. And he says this to the Colossians. And now he's, the, the faith and love that you have springs from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel. So just to, 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 to reiterate, as far as Paul is concerned, the essentials are faith, hope, and love. But faith and love, according to his letter to the Colossians, spring from the hope that we, we have stored up. You know, I, 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 I am not in a, a class that I'm going to spend a lot of time with you, but I can say this, that the hope then that we are talking about, the hope that people must have and that, that we in choose life are the agents of is the very foundation of Christian experience. Faith and love spring from hope. Well, what is this hope then? You know, the hope is not some speculation. The hope is not the subject of the thesis that I would get when I was a student at UA, that I believe in a, 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 a pie in the sky when I die. And it was simply speculative. The hope that is the foundation of Christian faith and love is a hope that is a hope of certitude. And the certitude that is the, it's, it's a hope, there's a certain element of objectivity in the hope. And this is clearly argued for by the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Corinthians in chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians, he is very clear that if Christ is not risen from the dead, if, if there's the, the fact that there is a resurrection of Christ from the dead, then our faith is vain. We have believed in vain and the whole thing is a farce. In fact, if, 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 if Christ is not raised up from the dead and our hope is just kind of like a speculative hope, we are, he, he, may, he implies, of all men most miserable. We have believed a lie. We are self-deluded. However, there is, there is a, a, a very important element that must be considered. 
Wolfhard Panningberg, a two begin theologian, spent a lot of time on this. You see, the anticipation of the resurrection of the dead to signal the end of history and the coming of God's kingdom is something that the prophets of the Old Testament signaled. When Jesus rose from the dead, what happened is that the end broke into history. And Jesus signaled that God's promise of the resurrection was indeed something that is going to happen by his being raised from the dead. Read the New Testament carefully. And you will always see when Jesus is raised from the dead, it is resurrection from um, the, uh, the dead ones. Scripture talks about him as becoming the first fruits of them that sleep. What Jesus' resurrection did was signal to the world that God's plan for the inbreaking of the kingdom to the coming of the kingdom of God when God will, will be in charge and the end of history. What Jesus did in being raised from the dead is to signal that that is true, that God is true, that God's promise is true, and that the, 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 the foundation on which people build their faith is a firm foundation. And therefore, it is not something of speculation or we think, but in the resurrection, if Jesus is not raised from the dead, Forget all these things. But Christ is risen and has become the first fruits of them that sleep. Amen. That is the foundation bedrock of our hope. And brothers and sisters, see Eli, choose life international, base their work on the fact of Jesus resurrection. Jesus is alive. And if Amen. Jesus is alive, prayer and proclamation in his name is not something that we are guessing or spelling about, but it is a fact of hope. In fact, writer to the Hebrews says, this hope that we have is an anchor for the soul. It is something that those who have it, though the songwriters have made much of that with the anchors, though the angry surges roll, or my tempest-driven soul, I am peaceful, for I know doesn't matter where the winds may blow. I have an anchor firm and sure that will evermore endure because Christ is risen from the dead. But brothers and sisters, it is not only this hope that is a theory or is theology. This hope, Paul writes to the Romans in his letter to the Romans, Romans chapter five, one to five, is a hope that we have assurance of as we go through the formation of our spiritual character. So Paul says, we, re, we, 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 are, we are justified by faith through our Lord Jesus Christ and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of, the, 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 of, of, of God. But not only so, we rejoice in tribulation and we rejoice in hardship because we know that God is doing something in our lives, those of us who have this relationship with God. And it comes down to say character brings hope. And he makes the point that this hope is not just speculation. It is not a hope that we need to be ashamed about. Choose Life International doesn't have to hide their hand and say that what we are talking about is Christian hope when we are giving people a new lease on life. This hope is a hope that we know is a fact because God 
takes love and sheds it in a, abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, which is a matter of God's own presence in the eternal, internal life of God, that Holy Spirit comes to people right now. And when he comes, one of the things that he does is to shed abroad love in our heart making us know that this condition that really is a condition native to God himself, the eternal lover, loving the eternally beloved, as Augustine says, with the fellowship of love. This God who is love, he by the Holy Spirit sheds abroad this love in our hearts and we experience, it is a subjective experience of grace. That love, heaven come down, says the, the, the song, and glory fills our heart, soul. It, 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 is the, it is the experience of love. John says we know we have passed from death unto life because we love even people who are our enemies. We love the brethren. So as I reflect on love today, as I reflect on hope today, I want to say that we have a sure foundation because Jesus is risen from the dead. We have a sure foundation because by the power and presence of the Holy Spirit, God brings and fills our life supernaturally with love. And this love is an assurance of our hope. I want to end by saying two things. Paul in writing to the Thessalonians say that he thanks God for them because of their faith that produces work. But he also says that he thanks God for them because of their love that causes, prompts them to sacrificial labor. And he says to the Thessalonians, he says, I thank God for them, for the hope, the hope that inspires your endurance. One of the things that the sure hope does is give us the where we are with all to endure, to go through whatever we have to go through. It might look dark and we can't see anything, but we have a hope. And the hope is the source of our endurance. CLI continue to hold out this hope to people. For the hope that we have in God, the hope that we have in the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, the hope that we have by the experience of the Spirit is sufficient to make us go through anything in this life. Paul, in giving his benediction to the Roman Christians, said, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Choose Life International, continue your mission to hold out the hope of God in Christ. We are not speculating. It's a sure hope and anchor for our souls. God bless you as you celebrate 14 years and God give you many more years to rescue the perishing and hold out hope for those who otherwise will be hopeless. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Well, 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 we certainly thank Reverend Dr. Samuel Vassal for sharing uh, that word with us. Indeed, if we need a word at this time, it is a word of hope. And that hope is found in God. The God of hope will give us 
hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you very much, Reverend Basil. And at this time, we are going to have a special prayer of rededication. And this prayer of rededication will be done by Reverend Renard White, CLI Reference Board member and pastor of the Tower Hill Missionary Church. So let's invite Reverend White to lead us in that prayer of rededication at this time. Are you on Reverend White? Can you hear me now? Oh, yes. Yes, we are hearing you. All right. Okay, thank you. Yes. Our oh, kind Heavenly Father, we bow in your awesome presence this afternoon to give you thanks and to give you praise for your faithfulness, for your kindness, for your goodness to all of us. But particularly this evening, we thank you for uh, Choose Life International, for its coming into being. We thank you for the vision and the wisdom that has brought it into being. We thank you most of all for your grace and your goodness that has sustained its leadership and its support system to this point. Thank you for the many, many persons that have been helped over these 14 years. We pray, my God, that the, the entire uh, body of, of workers with CLI, will recognize that this is a work for, from you and that all glory belongs to you. Thank you, Lord, for the many lives that have been touched across the world. Lord, from that which was a small beginning to have touched so many lives across the world, we bless your name and we thank you. We ask, Lord, for a special blessing, for special guidance, for special direction, for special covering upon Dr. Thomas and his wife and the others who work with them, Lord. We recognize, Lord, that a movement like this that speaks of hope and commitment to you will meet upon fight, will meet upon challenges. But we thank you that you who have begun a good work will perform it even unto the day of Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, on this the occasion of the 14th anniversary. We bless you. We thank you. We give you all the glory. We say all praise and all glory to you, Jesus. And Lord God, for the lives that will be touched going forward, we commit them into your hand, Lord. And we pray that we will look to you in hope continually, for hope make it not a shame. And so, Father, now in the name of Jesus, I pray your hand upon this organization. Oh God, we pray that going forward, Lord, everything will be committed to you. We will give you all the praise. We will give you all the glory. We pray that you'll raise up other supporters and support systems so that this CLI ministry will grow from strength to strength and that many persons, Lord, will experience hope because CLI is doing a work guided and, and directed by you. So, Father, we just pray now that in a, in a marked and a marvelous way, your hand of blessing will be upon this ministry. We thank you. We bless your name. We praise you for what you have done so far, and we look forward to what you will do going forward. Thank you, Father. We praise you and we honor you. Thank you for the word this evening from Dr. Sam. We pray, Lord, that we will all be inspired. We'll be all men and women of hope. Oh, God, look into you and praising you and waiting on you for what you will do. We give you thanks. We recommit the organization, Lord, to many years again of service. 14 gone, but many years to go. We place it in your hand. And we thank you that you are the God of all grace, the God of all comfort, the God of all hope. We give you thanks and we give you praise and we say thanks be to your great name. Bless your name, Jesus. In your precious name we ask it. Amen. 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 Amen.
Amen. Well, it certainly has been a pleasure and privilege for me to be your moderator this evening. And again, uh, if you take anything away from this uh, time together, remember there is hope in the Lord. Look at some of those circumstances in your life that seem impossible. And remember that nothing is impossible with God. Against <clears throat> all hope, Abraham mm. had hope. And he experienced uh, the miraculous intervention of God. There is hope, my friends, mm -hmm. in Jesus. There is hope in, in the Lord. Lord. Mm -hmm. Again, I commend to you the Ministry of Choose Life International for your prayers and your financial support. Uh, keep this close on your prayer list. And uh, in the days ahead, uh, even as we may face more challenging times, we do not know what is ahead. We ask that you pray for this organization, that it will continue to transform lives through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you and uh, have a good evening. I'll turn over now to Donovan and Faith. Thank you very much, uh, Raphael. Wanted to say a big thank you to you for the serving as our moderator. You were rampart in the ticket and you maneuvered very well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your willingness to be able to do this, sir. Nobody would have known that I called on you last minute as somebody was unable to make it. Thank you, Raf. Thanks so much to all of you who have participated on the program. Thanks to those of you who have been just uh, there up at midnight, almost carrying. And I know that there's at least one other person from England right now. Um, I am grateful for the testimonials that you have served, you, you have shared. Um, Kim, Stacey and Kimble, thank you for being a part of the, tonight's program. Mr. Keith Ellis, thank you so much. Sister Karen Carberry, thank you for the greetings. Pastor Dwight, such a joy to be the official counseling arm of Transform Life Church. Thank you for taking the time to be with us. Miss Lizma, Lizma Forbes, thank you for reflecting your honest views and how we continue to serve with Unicoma or better known in some parts as courts. Thanks uh, to Rosie for just presenting that, that song. I wanna be careful that I'm not missing anybody um, there. Thanks to Stephen in the background uh, who just managed the technical a system. Thanks to Daniel Thomas for laboring over that video presentation and that reflection of pictures as you worked alongside your mom. By the way, Faith, happy Grandmother's Day to you. Today in some circles, first, Thursday, first one in October, and all the grandparents, happy Grandparents Day. Yeah. Um, thanks to my sister, Vernica, for introducing our, our special guest speaker, Bishop Dr. Sam Vassal. Your contribution continues to inspire hope in us. Thank you for your practical, prayerful, and, um, and just prayers uh, over, over the years and your support, your words of wisdom, and your continued friendship and partnership in ministry. Thanks for that prayer, uh, Rev. You know, I started out by highlighting, Faith, you want to say anything right now? Thank, thank you to all of you to, who are participating i want i want to thank all those who participated thanks for all of those who are here with us today celebrating our 14th anniversary uh rev white thank you for that prayer of dedication really appreciate it and thank you everyone you know who has prayed for us over these years we could not have done this without you. Whether it is your prayers or your practical support or whatever you have done, even if it is giving us a cup of cold water, we are very grateful. Thank you to, to Father Bruce Fletcher and, and OSJ, you know, they are our what are they for us, Donovan? 
partners. He prefers to be called partner than landlord. <laughs> yes, they are our partners in ministry. And they're not only just our landlord, they open doors for us because it is through Brother Bruce and the OSJ that we were able to share with the, the, the group in Zimbabwe. So we really want to thank each person, each group, whoever you are, for how you have labored with us. Thanks to our volunteers again. Thanks to our staff. Oh, my goodness. Thanks. You know, to I want to just take time out to just name the staff members. Now, I don't know. Some of them are on, but and I can't ask them to show our your faces. Right? Because sometimes people see Choose Life International and they see Faith and Donovan. But thanks to our core of counselors and our staff and our volunteers, we are so grateful to you. Look again, oh. we're going to post um, the, the video that you saw today again, so you can look at it again, because it is many persons who have made this possible. And to God be the glory. To Amen. God. Amen. Amen. So our staff members, Sharon McCarthy, Stephen McCarthy, Tamisha McKenzie, Anjali Cohen, Daniel Miller, and Faith and I. And there are over one dozen associate counselors serving alongside uh, us. And uh, we celebrate the goodness of the Lord. Rosie, uh, Rosemary Stewart, who sang part of our part-time staff there, with us associate counselor thank and you associate counselor. yeah all right thanks all right so veneto has been our prayer partner leading these wednesday morning prayer meetings every third wednesday is prayer meeting and we invite you to come and be with us the next third wednesday and veneto will also lead ven thanks for opening in prayer with us um today we guess what we will continue our focus on uh restoring hope and this sunday coming will be having a presentation on understanding high-functioning depression by Dr. Parnell Bell. She presented at the World Suicide Prevention Day seminar. It went very well. Then the following Sunday, we'll be having Dr. Hyacinth Peart talking about the church and mental health. There's always something here to help to edify, to encourage, and to impact. As I wrap up, I really want to say, want to give glory to God. I think about the, the, the words like a lizard can be handled by the hand, but is found in king's palaces. Proverbs 30, verse 28. See, I like a lizard. King's palaces. Faith and I were invited as guests of the governor general of Antigua and his wife uh, to do seminars. And we were treated, oh boy, we were in this vehicle going through the traffic and the siren and so forth, escorted to the airport. One Jamaican who, who works at security saw us in the airport coming out and she asked us, are you dignitaries in Jamaica too? We said we are dignities, dignitaries everywhere we go. We are kingdom people. Yes. And um, think about, we were guests of the governor general as he hosted a conference with 1,200 people. Um, and we were, we had, I had the privilege of presenting in that session. Like, like a lizard found in king's palaces, like a lizard found in king's, found, can be handed by the hand, but is found in king's palaces. A little tributary breaking out into a big ocean. And we are still in the middle of the story. We started with 40 people with a World Suicide Prevention Day conference in 2009. 40 people face to face at the then um, Hilton New Kingston Hotel this past year. We had 60 people, about 60 people faced in, in person, and we had 2,160 on Zoom and YouTube. And we say, to God be the glory, the tributary is, and is, is growing. It's not the end of it yet. We praise God for those encouragement, for those vision, and we ask you above everything else, continue to commit this work of Choose Life International into the hands of the Lord. We are here to do what we believe God has called us uh, to do. Nothing more, nothing less. Finally, as soon as I finish this program, I'm gonna be reaching out to somebody 
who is threatening to kill herself. Message I just got while we are going through this webinar. I ask you to be praying with us mm -hmm. as, this, as we reach out to this person and many others who call from time to time. Our mission in life is to help people live physically, emotionally, and spiritually, and your prayers are important. We're going to go for the closing right now. The Aaronic Blessing would be, would be played. Um, Swallowfield Chapel Worship Team as we close with that benediction. After that, we'll take off the recording uh, and the, the uh, streaming, and we'll have upfront and close for five minutes when we'll have a little party just celebrating together. Stephen, over to you. Thanks again, Faith. Thanks again, all of you, uh, for being with us today. Shalom. Thank you, Donovan. You're welcome, darling. Sound. Still not hearing, Stephen. So well, Stephen, yes. For our living hope, your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love, where my heart becomes free. And my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. And I will sing the Holy Spirit. You are welcome. Come from this place. Come from this place and fill the Hallelujah. Yes, we long for your presence, Lord. And now for the ironic blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace, both now and forevermore. Amen. Thanks again. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Praise God. All right. So we're going to take off the recording now. Those of you on YouTube and Facebook, thank you so much for joining. If you want to jump into our little chit-chat party time, saying hello, 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 and celebrating together, you may join us on Zoom. Again, see you next week. Same place, same time, 5, 30, 5 o'clock Jamaican time. Whatever time you are in England, in Zimbabwe, Barbados, New York, wherever. See you next week.